must say, this looks like my kind of crowd. I really mean it. People dressed up so badly. Look at this. <laughs> anyway, uh, doesn't matter. Where are you from, my friend? Oh, whoopee. Fire a rocket. <laughs> I've always enjoyed Don Rickles' joke. Flying to Las Vegas to meet Don Rickles, I'd braced myself for the worst, ready for his infamous verbal assault. But surprisingly, he turned out to be quite the opposite of his image. He's a friendly, happily married father of two, who's still close with his mom, and very involved with his faith. Guten Schum. That's Yiddish for a guy with a great heart. <laughs> My dream is to lay on the couch and watch a lot of television and uh, live the life of ease, so... Uh... I'm not the kind of guy that gets up in the morning and thinks I'm Al Jolson and wants to do this 24 hours a day. It's nothing like that. For people who don't know you, are you like the guy that walks out on stage and starts screaming the insults? Well, I think down deep, uh, when I was a young man, my frustrations of uh, trying to be, uh, you know, uh, popular and trying to be part of the party, because I was always a shy uh, kind of person, and most actors are basically shy, but I was extremely so. And I think uh, because of my shyness, I got that aggressiveness of making fun of people or laughing at them and making jokes about them and finding people responding in a very, very positive manner. So it, it became part of, it really was part of my personality. Have you changed much since you were a young fellow? I think we all change. I've mellowed somewhat, but I don't think I've changed to the point where, you know, my lifestyle is different, my thinking is different. No, I... Let's see what's different. I just happen to have a book here. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, <laughs> let's see. Who's something. this guy, huh? Yeah, God, that was a good-looking guy. Charlie Dumbbell, there I am. Well, what is that stuff on top of your head? <laughs> that was hair, but oh. that doesn't make the man necessarily. <laughs> I, I, I found out I was more successful without hair, so uh, <laughs> World War II came along and I went to the Philippines and that made me lose my hair fast. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, old lady, either you laugh or you're going in a home. Now I'm not going to say it again. Was there ever a time when one of your insults truly backfired? No, I, I, I must say, when I stand on the stage, the mistakes are made. But I, uh, when you do this kind of thing, Cynthia, you really have to believe in it. In other words, I never look back. I mean, I say what I want to say, and I do it, and that's it, and that's the end of it. I don't say, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Or maybe you do that, you hesitate. It's like a fighter. If you have a right hand and you're going to knock out your fellow opponent, you better throw the right hand and not worry about it. So I don't think twice about that. I just say what I think I'm going to say. My instincts tell me it's funny, and I go with it. Is there anyone you refuse to insult? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, if the, uh, if the Pope uh, will just say, uh, if the Pope was in my audience, I think he would be somebody I would kid about in a, in a dignified way. But I don't think there's anybody in the world that would come to a show that if they come to the show, they're part of the team. If they stay home, that's a different story. But I don't think there's anybody in the world that's that, in, that important. It's not open to a, a little fun and good taste if it's done properly. Got a real, you know what, you'll get an Emmy for this. How many guys are you going to get backstage doing all these funny lines for you after that crack interview with Cynthia, who <laughs> was a basket case? <laughs> so does that, I'm in the movie. As soon as they see the camera, they all smile. Look, look at how they all love me. When there's no camera, they all go, eh, hey, where is Catherine? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take care. See you around, folks. Love you, Hollywood. Love you, Hollywood.